So in this video, I'm going to keep my promise and talk about hyperbolic geometry. In our previous videos for lecture nine, we've been talking about non-Euclidean geometries. In particular, we've been focused on this idea of a manifold, um, a smooth manifold, I should say. It's a geometry uh, for which locally is Euclidean, but globally could be something different, could have some type of curvature to it. Maybe it's not flat. Uh, we've explored some options of elliptic um, geometry, spherical geometry, and the projective geometry. Uh, real projective geometry as examples. Uh, those both satisfy the elliptic parallel postulate. All lines intersect each other globally, even if there do exist neighborhoods for which they look parallel on. Um, so I want to explore the other parallel, other parallel alternative, the so-called hyperbolic parallel postulate. The hyperbolic parallel postulate tells us that given a line and a point off the line, there's at least two parallel lines going through that point. Uh, can we construct a manifold that satisfies that condition? Because after all, like handshake geometry or finite geometries that satisfy the hyperbolic parallel postulate, that's great. But what people really care about are their manifolds, smooth manifolds that satisfy the hyperbolic parallel postulate. That's really what we mean by a hyperbolic geometry, a manifold with the hyperbolic parallel postulate satisfied. Uh, well, let me give you such an example. So we're going to call H2... Um, that'll be short for the hyperbolic plane. Um, we're going to do a Euclidean model to make it a little bit easier to see here. So our lines are going to look a little janky, but that's because these aren't going to be Euclidean lines. These are going to be hyperbolic lines. We can define H2 to be the set as a set of points. It's going to be the upper half plane. That is, we're going to take things that are above the x-axis in the Euclidean plane. We do not include anything below the x-axis, nor do we include the x-axis itself. It doesn't belong to our geometry, just the upper half plane. So we want to collect all of those Euclidean points such that the y coordinate is positive. For this model, we call this the um, we call this the upper half plane model. Okay, um, so those are the points in our geometry. What are the lines in our geometry? Well, it turns out we have to we have to define two different lines. Um, if we have a point which has if we have two different points which have the same x coordinate but their y coordinates different, then we're going to define the line between them to be the vertical ray that emanates from the x axis. It's perpendicular to the x axis and contains those line those two points right there. So vertical lines are considered lines in this geometry, but it's really a vertical ray because we don't get anything below. And actually, this point on the x axis is a point at infinity. We don't have that point as part of our geometry. So if two points are on the, have the same x coordinate, there's a vertical line that connects them. We consider that a hyperbolic line. Now for any other point, right, if we have any other point in our geometry, then we define the line um, to be the semicircle whose diameter rests on the x axis that the arc, the semicircle arc that goes through these. So you get something that looks something like this, right? So this semicircle is then considered a hyperbolic line, the hyperbolic line determined by these two points. Um, it's a semicircle, so we only get the upper semicircle. And in fact, these two points on the x-axis, they are not part of the geometry. So we get this circular arc right here. Um, it's an open arc. We don't include the endpoints. So this gives us two types of hyperbolic lines. Um, and then incidence is exactly what you would expect. Points are just elements of a set. Lines are collections of points, so incidence is satisfied in the usual uh, the usual aspect that you would expect right there. All right, so this this set of points with this idea of lines and incidence gives us the real hyperbolic plane, and this is in fact a it's going to be a hyperbolic two manifold because locally things look like Euclidean space. If you were to take the neighborhood of a the neighborhood of any point, you could distort it in such a way that it looks like the usual um, x, y axis, the Euclidean plane, like so. And again, we're not going to go into all the details there, but this does, in fact, it was a hyperbolic two-manifold. Um, it satisfies all the incidence axioms. Um, I just told you how to determine, two line, uh, determine a line between two points. Line determination satisfied. We have three points. Every line has two points, and no line has all the points. It's an incidence geometry, and it also satisfies the hyperbolic parallel postulate. How do we see that? Well, consider the following. Um, here is a line L. I actually take a vertical line, for example, but this model could easily be done, uh, excuse me, this example could also be done using a semicircle as a line. No big deal. Uh, but we have a line here. We have a point off of the line. And look, there are multiple, 
you actually see three lines passing through P that are parallel to L, because parallel just means they don't intersect each other. So this point has at least three. There's actually uncountably many, because I can make these semicircles get larger and larger and larger, as long as they pass through P. And in fact, there's also the vertical line that goes through it as well, right? These are all lines that pass through P that are perpendicular, or that are parallel to L, excuse me. Um, and then if we wanted to find lines, like here's some other point over here, some lines that are parallel to this one right here. Uh, well, we have this vertical line, that's one. We have another semicircle. We have another semicircle. We have another semicircle. Um, you have uncountably many parallel lines going on here. So this is a hyperbolic uh, model. And so this model right here is commonly referred to as the Poincaré uh, half plane model, um, kind of like the real projective plane. There are other models of hyperbolic geometry, and we'll explore some more in the future, of course. Uh, but this half plane model is a good one to use as we go forward. As we think about hyperbolic geometry, think about this model right here.